Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. And Tom, great to finally meet you. I'm an avid on-point listener. I think so much so that it crosses into maybe what's known as a bromance. So I think I have a bromance with Tom Ashbrook, or at least his, his voice. And uh, if you had seen the, my talk has changed to become uh, ideas are worthless. It was originally supposed to be perfect place to talk about ideas. Uh, it was supposed to be about creating a customer-driven company. And uh, if you've ever seen one of my talks, they're not really talks, they're more like rants. So I'm here at the end of the day to kind of wake you up uh, with one of my rants about ideas. And let me tell you a little bit more about myself. So David Cancel, on the internet you can find me as, at dcancel. And as Tom said, I love building things. But not, you know, I've been obsessed my whole life with just making things. And it started out on the software engineering side of actually creating products, right? Actually, it started way before that. Uh, in high school and elementary school, but just making something out of nothing. That's kind of my obsession. Uh, it crossed into software engineering, creating products, and then creating teams as I started to manage teams, and then later into creating companies, which to me all seem to be the same thread. It's basically like creating these little worlds, right? The first one is very small, and it's easy to control because you control everything, which is software. Uh, and then you grow into teams, and you have to deal with personalities. Weird for an introvert like myself. And then you have to create a company, which is teams outside of engineering, which is even weirder. Right? But all of these things are just like creating a product, except that the reaction time is much slower. And uh, this is a photograph of a company that I co-founded, Compete. And uh, I just, when I got here, I noticed that one of my uh, mentors and the CEO of Compete is actually in the audience, Don McLagan. So between my bromance and my mentor being here, probably a little nervous. Uh, but one thing, I usually only speak at uh, startup and kind of marketing conferences, and, um, and so it's a room full of makers, right? And uh, one thing that I always try to emphasize is no matter my obsessions around making things, like these things are way better to make than uh, any product or software, right? And this is my family, this is about a year ago, and uh, building a family and spending time with friends uh, is way more important than any of the stuff that we'll talk about on the idea side and uh, creation side. So as of last year, around 15 months ago, I work at a company called HubSpot. HubSpot acquired my company, Performable, where I was the CEO and co-founder, uh, last June. And so uh, for one of the first times in my life, I actually work somewhere. Right? That hasn't happened too often. Uh, and this is kind of like my my background of starting companies, uh, kind of co-founder of or founder of five of those. So like I said, I'm really excited to be here. One last shot, this is my daughter, Carolina, who goes by CJ, and, uh, but let's jump in around ideas are worthless. Uh, so being kind of a product guy, labeled a product guy, or labeled a startup guy, and then also uh, doing angel investing uh, in local startups, uh, I get a lot of people who come to me and want to talk about ideas, so much so that I've gotten to the point, which is great because I have ideas and I'm dropping ideas as I'm walking along the stage. I have so many of them coming uh, out of my brain. And, uh, but I've gotten to the point that I kind of feel like ideas, I'm tired of hearing ideas. Like ideas are great and uh, I'm obsessed with new ideas, but you know, I've gotten to the point that I don't want to talk about ideas anymore because I think ideas by themselves are worthless and if you get if you remember one thing from this talk, it's you know, Albert Einstein's quote here, this should be what you should remember. And it's like, vision without execution is hallucination. All right? And that is my entire talk, summarized right here. All right? At some point, you have to do. At some point, you have to stop dreaming. At some point, you have to go into the lab. You have to write something down. You have to uh, risk failing in order to see if, what your, if your idea is worthwhile. And so I'm here at 4 o'clock to be your wake-up call. Right? So this is something that I say all the time. If you know me, I say less thinking, more doing, less thinking, more doing, less thinking, more doing, over and over again. And I think your biggest problem as people who generate ideas uh, or who are um, excited about ideas is overthinking. Right? It's about overanalyzing your ideas. And it's not underthinking. It's kind of getting lost inside your head. And this happens naturally to to myself, like I mentioned, being an uh, introvert, kind of like lost inside my head because it's safe inside my head. 
right? It's safe to be inside there and to be researching something or reading books or reading magazines, re reading blogs, reading Twitter, Facebook, whatever. That's easy. Actually doing something is hard. And so I don't think you have an idea problem. I don't think there's an idea shortage, right? I think we have a doing problem because doing is the hard part. I think you need to try more. You need to be ready to fail. It's really hard to fail. Uh, and I failed lots in my life. And, uh, and to get outside of your shell is the point. I started running about six months ago, seven months ago, first time in my life. And um, I didn't follow my own advice. You know, what was the first thing I did? I started to read Runner's World, right? <laughs> and then I started to read, I started to watch some YouTube blogs on like pose running, right? And then I started to uh, follow some, uh, follow some blogs, read some videos, and I kept going over and over and looking at this. I bought some new sneakers, uh, you know, talked to a lot of folks who were running, and then of course my wife, being the smarter one of, of, uh, of the pair, uh, said, why don't you follow your own advice? Why don't you just do it? And, uh, and then I said, ah, of course, I have to actually go outside and run, right? Uh, but I did, I've done this over and over again, and we need to kind of uh, be shocked sometimes, and I'm here to shock you and to force you to get out of your comfort zone. And I do this over and over. I started to do another non-running activity, and it, I found myself doing the same thing this year, which is just like over-analyzing, reading, watching videos, and not actually doing it, because doing is hard. And this is Jay-Z, if you don't know, and uh, that's a lyric from one of his songs, right? I'm not afraid of dying, I'm afraid of not trying. So I'm here to tell you to get up, get out. It's four o'clock, you shouldn't be sitting here. Uh, listening to me, you should be out doing something, creating something, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a company. It doesn't have to be anything, uh, something big. It could be a robot. It could be anything you want to do. You could be uh, a painting. Just get up and go and go do something, right? And ideally, for me, being a startup guy, it's about solving customer problems. And um, when I present at startup events, I get lots of questions afterwards about like theories and worksheets and all of these new books about like how they should actually go solve a customer problem or find the right problem in order to start their company. And I always say the same thing. It's like the best way to solve a customer problem is with customers. Talk to customers. Hmm. Actually go talk to customers? Can't I just read a book about solving customer problems? No, you actually have to go talk to customers and, know, and work with customers in order to solve their problem. Right? There's no ideas for dummies, although there probably is. I, didn't, I should have checked. Uh, I don't think there's any cliff notes for ideas and no textbooks and no multiple choice answers. And there's no right answers, right? Once again, no right answers. And there's no, you know, I blog a lot at my blog about like people always asking me about basically wanting to know some secrets. Like how did you start a company? What was the moment of inspiration? How did you think of the idea? What was the big idea? And it's like, there's never been a big idea. That's all. I've only seen the big idea in movies, right? And in kind of retrospective accounts of starting a company. If you actually talk to founders who have started a company, uh, there was no aha moment. There was just lots and lots of pain. But everyone is obsessed with these tips. They want a tip. They want a secret. They want some kind of shortcut, some kind of hack in order to do this. This is another great quote that you should remember. This is, I, this is Edison, and Edison said, you know, opportunity is missed by most because it's stress in overalls and it looks like work, right? That's the point, right? I'm sorry to tell you at the end of the day that it's going to take hard work, and, uh, but I understand that you're scared of trying, right? Now that I have kids and uh, my daughter's in second grade now, I look, and she was in a Montessori school until this year, and she's in a new school, and uh, I think a lot about what she's learning in school, about homework, about, uh, think back to my childhood memory about school. And I think like in some ways, we're kind of taught to look for those, to not engage and, tor and, not, and look for those right answers or look for those videos, look for those guides or shortcuts, right? And not to, and to be scared about, you know, having the wrong answer or failing, right? And so, finally, I want you to please start doing and leave now and go do something. <laughs> please. Thank you.
That's it. Thank you, David. Thank you, Tom. My bro. <laughs> My bro. <laughs> bro Manser. Bro Manser. Yes. Uh, okay, just a couple of questions, then the police sure. will be here to pick you up. All right. Because this is the ideas conference, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you say, get, get doing, not thinking. Yes. But what if we're doing dumb stuff? I think, I think that's, the, uh, that's always the comeback. And I know you don't mean it this way. You mean it's a dumb question? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think like... No, I do mean it that way. Uh, so I think people ask that question and just say like, and want to take kind of a, an extreme, especially uh, my audience, which is usually engineers, who are want to be, you know, in some ways uh, pedantic about like, oh, you said, you know, uh, just do it and don't think. So it means I just must do dumb things, right? There's no in between where well, we know everything country? is great. We get the feeling that you know we're collectively yeah. add it all up. Yeah. There's a big mountain of dumb stuff going on. Totally. So, but the only way to know if what you're doing is dumb is to actually go out and do it. Right? Not to just sit back in your own head. What and if we've say, been like, doing it for half a century, let's say? Then no, change. we just like doing it. <laughs> like burning fossil fuels. Fuel. It feels so good. Yeah. Then we just, like to do that. Yeah, you know? we love to do it. Uh, you know, I think we have to do these things in order to learn from them. Right? I don't think we could have sat back and said, um, let's think about burning fossil fuels and let's spend a century thinking about it and then figure out, like, oh, maybe that's a bad idea. Right? We've had to go through that experience and learn collectively from the experience. Just do it. It's great advice, especially at an ideas conference. We accept. We accept. <laughs> David Cancel, thank you very much. Thank, thank you so you, much Tom. for being here. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Thank you.